presented by Church Tech U. It's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to troubleshoot when Pro Presenter won't start. Hi, and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I teach you all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you've ever been in a situation where Pro Presenter wouldn't start and It took a little bit of trouble, or you just want to have this in your back pocket just in case you run into this situation, go ahead, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and uh, give me a thumbs up while you're at it. This first happened to me when I had ProPresenter 5, I think, and I was trying to live stream a uh, tutorial Back then, it was low res and all kinds of craziness. But I went to go do it, and ProPresenter just wouldn't start up. Turned out in that situation that the cause was some software that I just installed. But there have been other situations where I've run into this problem. And um, knowing these tricks has been able to save me. It's very similar to what Renewed Vision uh, support will tell you, but I'm going to put a little tweak on it that may help you save a lot of time if this is something that just has to get done sooner rather than later. So here we are in my computer, and you can see ProPresenter has in fact started up, so that's not the case for me. But let me show you what would happen um, Well, let me show you how I would deal with it. Uh, First off, you need to know ahead of time where your ProPresenter folder is located. If you're on a Mac, you can do this and uh, just uh, do a search for ProPresenter, and then you need to find the folder here and go to it. Um, Another way to do it, if you can't do that ahead of time. You, there's also a search function in Windows. You need to find that folder. So another way to do it is we can go into ProPresenter, Preferences, and then Advanced. Now be very cautious when you do this. What you need to do is look for this Support Files thing. If you click on it, make sure that you click cancel. Don't select another folder. Don't do anything like that because that'll cause problems too. I'm going to click on this because I know what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to do that. And look, it shows me this. And I can click down here and um, I can see that that is in fact a folder here. Um, Basically, I need to find where this is located here. On my computer so I know that it's in my root directory actually so I'm going to click cancel having not selected anything else that's very important and click cancel so I know that where this is well I have gone ahead and I have um, brought that folder up so let me jump out of ProPresenter. Here's where that folder is. And you might notice that I've got various ProPresenter folders. This isn't because ProPresenter has had problems on all these occasions. This is because since I train people on how to use ProPresenter, I reset it to factory defaults all the time. So I'm recording this um, in uh, on February 1st, 2022. So let me click on rename here, and I like to do year first, and then month, and then day. So do that, and now when I fire up ProPresenter, it'll have a clean slate. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to do that. This is your first step. This will prove that it's not the installation of ProPresenter itself. It's one of your uh, files. Notice, just a second ago, I had uh, uh, multiple libraries, multiple playlists. I had uh, stuff down here in the lower right-hand corner. I had media. It's 
basically just a clean slate. This is how I would train someone to start from scratch, by the way. And if you've got only enough time to rebuild everything, or let's say you had it exported somewhere else and you can import everything, this is a fine way to make it work just for now. But keep in mind, if we go into screens, configure screens, all my screens are missing too. If we go into screens, um, edit looks, I only have the one look with the one screen. If we go into ProPresenter uh, preferences and then advanced, you might have seen that I had MIDI devices, I had um, a Rostock device before, all that's gone. Uh, inputs, no inputs, no audio or video inputs here. So this really is a clean slate. But that proves that the problem is not the ProPresenter installation because it fires up when there's no user files. So you've got a corrupted user file somewhere. So we need to figure out which user file is corrupted. So I'm going to quit ProPresenter once again. And now, notice it remade my folder here. And it's got configuration, stuff like that in here. So I'm going to compare this. Uh, let's... I'm going to open this in a new, uh, new window here. Uh, actually, let's see here. There we go. So let's go into, mine is in the root directory, and this is it. So I just want to do some comparison here. So this here, let me just open that up directly so that we can com do some comparing. I've got a bunch of junk in here that is in bad places and stuff, and I need to clean it out. But what really matters is my library. Notice if I compare my libraries. Okay, I have had... Uh, them access today so they may be the culprit but look at individual um, presentations within the library if it quit working today this is the one that I'm thinking may be the culprit because it was changed today at 2.57 p.m. but I don't know that so Maybe what I'll do is I will replace this library with uh, this library folder with all of these library folders. So let's do that. I'm going to rename this just so that ProPresenter doesn't know to look for it. So libraries test. If I were to fire this up, it would make a new libraries folder with the default library in it and nothing in it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to drag this over. And let's look for that particular file, the today file here. So that one right there, I'm going to put that in the default in my test library here. So that's, oh, and this one was accessed today, and so was this one. So I'm going to, again, move that over here just so that I have it separated out. And this, since it has the test, ProPresenter won't look at it. So that's good. And I could continue on and look at files that have been accessed since Pro presenter quit working. That's step number one. It may not be one of those, but it's likely to be one of those. Okay, 
So now I could fire up ProPresenter again. And when I do that, look, all my stuff is back. Well, my media wasn't because I didn't drag the media back over. But I would need to replace the media. Uh, basically, I would want to put everything back where I want it it was except the files that I suspect because they've been changed recently okay so that's good that tells me it's none of these files that were uh, accessed before today so I've eliminated a huge number of them right off the bat it could be that you'll still have like 20 or 30 files that you need to deal with so moving them over one at a time could get a little difficult. So let's um, let's actually show you how to speed that process up as well. So I'm going to quit out a ProPresenter again. And now, since I think that it's uh, one of the ones here in the library test, I'm going to go to... The, here and I'm going to take half of these files. Why half? Well, because I can go through a large number of files very quickly. And if only one of these is corrupted, it will be obvious which half it's in. So now I'm just going to take these two here, drag them back to where they're there. So I've got two of the today uh files in there, this guy and this guy, and now I can fire up ProPresenter again. If it fires up perfectly fine, which I suspect it's going to because none of my files are corrupted, but it fires up perfectly fine, okay, it's not any of the, either of those two. It may be this last one, so I would just continue on, you know, if it was 20 files, do 10 and 10, then do 5 and 5, and then 2 and 3, and then, you know, just do it half at a time until you find out exactly which one is having uh, the problem. So I can quit ProPresenter now, and then I can... Um, put this one, which is the suspected one. Maybe I'd write down that this was the sp suspected problem file. Maybe I would, in Mac OS, you can uh, color code. So maybe I would add a red color code to indicate this is the suspected one. Put it back and then fire up ProPresenter again. If it doesn't fire up, I have found the one. Delete that bad boy, remake it, and you're done. If, on the other hand, it uh, still works, then look at some of your other uh, files that were over here and um, go from there. So basically, you're going to need to go through and um, I'm going to move all my libraries back over here and rename it because all my files were actually good to go. So I'm going to rename this one back to the way that it was. Actually, I should first rename this one because they would have had the same name to test. Okay, and then rename this back to just ProPresenter. And now, when I restart everything, and by the way, don't do this if you don't feel comfortable. Um, don't do this if it feels like uh, this is too much for you, etc. Only do this if um, you can uh, devote some time to troubleshooting or you're desperate and running out of time. 
So do that. Everything's back the way that it was. I can even bring this back so that you can see it. Uh, let's see how to troubleshoot. There. That's that one. Oops. So I need to change the configuration of that screen. But anyway, I can do that. And that's how that you could do some quick troubleshooting to find which file it is in ProPresenter 7. By the way, before we finish up, one other thing that you need to know is, in my experience, now I don't work for support, I just run along with Renewed Vision, the largest ProPresenter users group on Facebook. I think there are 40,000 members. In my experience, it's almost never the installation of ProPresenter itself. So when people say, hey, I've just reinstalled ProPresenter and it didn't change anything, that's because it's almost never the installation of ProPresenter itself. It's one of your files in all likelihood. I wouldn't even waste my time reinstalling ProPresenter itself. I would go directly to uh, troubleshooting which of my files is the cause of this. So just keep that in mind. If you like this content and tips and tricks like this, then you'll certainly like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course, which is free. All you need to do is go over to tdm.fyi slash pro7quick, put in your name and email address, and then um, I'll make a login for you, and you can take the class at your leisure. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from trinitydigitalmedia.com and churchtechu.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.